And as we bring to mind this, this sense of groundedness in the lineage which we, which we come to practice today, Let's remember uh, the meaning of taking refuge. That taking refuge is not something which is just a ritual, but it's something that we can do in any moment. We can take refuge in that awakened being who is our essential so, and we can bring our attention to the, the historical Buddha, the human being who found the path and, and articulated the path for us. and the community of people who are walking that path with us together. We're not alone. We are walking together with friends, Dharma friends. So as we usually do, let's, let's chant together. I'm going to share the screen and uh, people here, you can use your, uh, you can use your booklets that I gave with refuges and uh, precepts. So beginning with honoring the Buddha, you know, for me, I always uh, think that's so important because it makes me ask the question to myself, what, to what do I give respect? To what do, I, what do I count as important and worthy of my respect and, and, uh, and honoring? And, and is it really what is most important? You know, sometimes I may honor um, things that are less perhaps like um, being clever or being successful or, uh, or um, having things, having enough, quote unquote, enough. So, so remembering to direct my honoring and my respect towards what is um, most beneficial to myself and to others, most conducive to happiness and freedom. <clears throat> Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Udang Sarnang Gachami Damang Sarang Gachami Sangam Sarang Gachami Duty Ampi Budang Sarang Gachami Duty Ampi Damang Sarang Gachami Duty Ampi Sangam Saranam Gachami 
Tati Ampi Budang Saranang Gachami Tati Ampi Damang Saranang Gachami Tati Ampi Sangam Saranang Gachami So taking the five precepts, the training in peaceful conduct is uh, foundational to our practice. Um, it's, it's how we gather together a sangha to, to bring forward this intention to not cause harm to ourselves or to others, uh, to make this intention central in all we do. And, and, and implicit in these the way that we uh, chant or speak these or, or gather our attention around these precepts is also the positive iteration of them. So refraining from destroying living beings and also how can we support life? Um, refraining from taking that which is not freely given, how can we be generous and so on? Panati pata veramani sikapadam samadhyami Adina dana veramani sikapadam samadhyami Kamesu Michachara Veramani Sikapadam Samadiyami Musawada Veramani Sikapadam Samadiyami Sura Maria Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sikapadam Samadiyami Ida Misila Maga Falanya Nasa Pachayo Hotu Sadu 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 Anumodami. May this training in peaceful conduct help to bring about the knowledge of the path and the fruits of liberation. Right. phrase knowledge of the path always um, touches me because it, uh, it's, it's, it's an encouragement that I, um, that we are able to understand the path, that we're able to learn what the path is, that it's not, uh, you know, the confusion that we may feel, the overwhelm that we may feel, the stuckness that we may feel in our lives is not something that um, stays with us as we continue. We, we come to understand the path. We come to realize, well, this is, this is what is happening. I understand that, that these... Um, hindrances are arising. I understand the development of these, of these beautiful qualities of heart that um, can be developed and are developing. And so we, we come to understand uh, how the path unfolds and how it develops and how we are developing, um, how the Dharma is, is unfolding and developing within each one of us. So, uh, and so today, um, 
Uh, we're going to continue. I, I, I was away for a couple of weeks, and so I, um, I don't, I don't really know what was covered uh, while I was away. Uh, whether the the presenters uh, continued on with um, the Satipatthana Sutta that we've been working with over the past uh, six or seven months, I guess, um, since September. Uh, but whether they have or they haven't, I'm going to just continue on from where where I left off. Uh, so, uh, and and that was working with the hindrances in the fourth Satipatthana. So we're working uh, through the just the beginning of that Satipatthana is um, the hindrances, and and we had um, discussed. Sloth and torpor last time. Um, and today we're we're into restlessness and doubt. So, uh, sorry, restlessness and restlessness and remorse. Doubts. Doubts. The next one. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Uh, restlessness and remorse, or restlessness and worry. Uh, so, in this one, um, like in sloth and torpor. There are two uh, words that are used to express the uh, the hindrance, and uh, just reminding you, uh, like, what what is a what is it a hindrance to? Like when we say it's a hindrance, uh, what what's being hindered? Um, so what's being hindered actually is our capacity to be present, to pay attention. Uh, where these these hindrances get in the way, we get caught up. But um, a hindrance is also an opportunity. That's the other side of a hindrance, that it's an opportunity to actually come to understand these patterns that arise in the mind and and pull us away from being present and attentive and you know grounded in who we truly are. And uh, and so, uh, when we're mindful, mindful is the key, we can notice, oh, okay, there's something here. There's something that's really causing disturbance, stress, suffering, and we can pay attention to it and, uh, and work with it skillfully. So, so in the, um, uh, there's a particular uh, way that the Buddha talks about how we work with the hindrance in this fourth Satipatthana. And, uh, and I'm going to just read this, um, this, this text, um, a short a few phrases. If restlessness and worry is present within, one knows restlessness is, and worry is present within me. So that's the first thing. So you recognize it. So you so, so maybe something in your body tells you, uh, you know, oh, I'm, I'm feeling unease. And, um, and so uh, instead of, so the, our training helps us instead of running away from it, distracting ourselves or being driven by it, we turn toward it. So that's, that's the key is, you know, that we know it's there and that we turn toward it with interest, with curiosity. What's going on here? Or if restlessness and worry is not present within, one knows restlessness and worry is not present within me. So that's also, that's interesting, eh? Like, that's something that we don't usually do. Like, when we, like, if we're just going about our day and we're feeling ease, and we don't usually check in and say, hey, I'm not feeling anxious. I'm not feeling grasping. I'm not feeling aversion. I'm just feeling a sense of well-being. And, and, and it's, it's actually really, really important that we notice that and take the time to just affirm and inhabit that quali those qualities of absence, especially if there's a particular hindrance or pattern that is um, has been strong you know like you know say if you're working with greed uh, 
and you're in a particular situation in which greed has arisen or aversion and your you know, conditions for aversion uh, that you trigger you into reacting uh, with aversion, annoyance, judgment, and so on, uh, are present and you say, hey, look at that, you know, this feels free, this feels open, this feels spacious. Uh, and, and really inhabiting that, it helps that quality of freedom, absence of the hindrance to, to take root and to, um, to develop within us. And then this, is, this next part is really interesting. Um, one knows how unarisen restlessness and worry arises. One knows how arisen, you know, once it's arisen, restlessness and worry is removed. And one knows how removed restlessness and worry does not arise in the future. So, um, excuse me. So, so we, when we notice it is here, we may just look back, like what, what were the conditions? I mean, especially if we're mindful and that's why it's so important to continue to develop mindfulness in daily practice. Um, when we're mindful, we might say, yeah, well, what, what, what just happened? What caused this to arise, this restlessness? And, um, And, and I'm just going to bracket here that um, I think the way I understand these two words, what they're pointing to is that restlessness is more like a body, a somatic experience. Like you just feel this energy in your body. I mean, it can, it can be very extreme. Like some people have said they just want to run screaming out of the meditation hall, you know, when they're on retreat and restlessness arises very strongly. Uh, you know, it's just like this energy of, it feels very unsettled. And then the worry, or sometimes they use rem the word remorse is used. And I, I'm, there can actually be wholesome remorse. So that can be confusing. Uh, worry, I think is a better word. That's an Alios translation. Um, which is this, the mind that just goes and ruminates, you know, go back and back and back and back and something's, you know, uh, or, or, or the mind, which is just, you know, scattered and unsettled and just jumping from one thing to another um, is a kind of a, a restless mind. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so, so noticing um, what gave rise to that, you know, what's what's what are the conditions that are giving rise to the feeling in the body and the instability in the mind, the mind that keeps ruminating or keeps, you know, jumping to different things. I remember once I was on retreat and. Um, and it was mid retreat and, um, and I was noticing that my mind was, was just so many thoughts, so many thoughts. And, uh, and, and the mind had begun, had begun to kind of quiet down previously, you know, and, uh, and, and so I just, brought a kind of a, an inquiring attention to that uh, restless energy in the mind. And, um, and just something came up, something that was really kind of uh, just below the surface that I was touching into. I don't remember at this time what it was, but it was a, a kind of an insight uh, into something that um, was important and was liberating. And, um, and so, but 
but there was a kind of a, the restlessness of the mind uh, was a way of hiding from it. It was a way of, of avoiding it. So, so that, that can be a cause sometimes. It can also be habit, you know, that we just think some, somehow if we keep worrying about something that it's going to help. <laughs> and of course it doesn't, right? It just, um, uh, it just keeps us in unease and, um, and also inhibits us or is an obstacle to us uh, developing the openness, spaciousness, and equanimity to be able to receive whatever uh, life brings us because we're not in control of how life unfolds. Um, we have choices, we can make good choices, but, but things happen that are out of our control. And so, so, the, uh, so our practice can help us to instead of worrying and can help us to be um, able to receive what is unfolding in our lives. So what has given rise to restlessness and worry? So noticing that and noticing what happens when we turn our attention to this uh, energy, this pattern, um, this state of body and mind of uh, restlessness and worry. So noticing, does it change? Like if I, if I feel restless and I give my attention to you know, what's happening in the mind, what's happening in the body, does it change? One of the ways uh, that is often taught to, to give attention to restlessness, there, there are different skillful means with different, um, different hindrances, uh, different ways of working with them. So I, when, we, when we talked about sloth and torpor, I, you know, I, I mentioned some skillful means you know, each one of the hindrances, uh, we talked about some skillful means of working with each one of them. Uh, so with restlessness, it's, um, it's, it's often said to give some space. Like if you try to, you know, if, if there's a, a horse, which is, uh, you know, wild and wanting to run and you're trying to uh, tame the horse, um, then, you know, the first thing you do is you, you give it some space, not, not completely open space for it to run away, but uh, a wider space than just trying to, you know, tie it down and hold it in one place because there's so much energy. And so, so just allowing the body to be the sensations in the body to be known, to be felt, to be received. The word that I remember one time when I was working with a lot of restlessness and, and I, I wanted to find a word. And for me, it felt kind of jangly. It was like, you know, uh, just, yeah, that's the word for me. <laughs> but it, you might find another word that describes your restless energy. Um, and, and just uh, being, allowing the whole body to be known, receiving it in the whole body, not trying to focus in a very precise way on the breath, but, but just letting the breath be there as a kind of um, a grounding, but feeling the whole body, feeling the, the body resting on the earth, whether you're sitting or lying down or, um, you know, whatever your posture. Bringing, of course, um, always warmth and 
and kindness and acceptance to that quality of energy in the body. Like the body is expressing itself in this way and, um, and receiving that and the mind. So not getting caught in the narrative. Um, it's always because the narrative is, you know, when there's a narrative that, that there's always an I, a self that is in that narrative and there's identification. And then we create that, uh, that dualism of uh, wanting to control things and wanting things to be a certain way um, because of this or that, whatever our reasoning is. But um, so just letting thoughts be thoughts, letting body sensations be body sensations. Um, not trying to uh, shut down the thoughts or suppress them, um, but inviting the mind to be open, um, allowing the thought space to move through. And sometimes, sometimes the, the state, the mental state of restlessness and worry, the body state, the mind state can, uh, can stay. It doesn't necessarily um, disappear in, in, in one sitting or, you know, it can just be there. And, um, and so this, this, the quality of patience is, is important. Um, kindness, acceptance. You know, we, it's recognition that it's not pleasant. You know, none of the hindrances are pleasant, right? So that's, that's actually an important recognition um, is recognizing that it's unpleasant because sometimes, especially with sense desire, we can get deceived into thinking that it is pleasant. If we get caught up in sense, desire, fantasy, you know, we can get lost in, you know, like pleasant fantasy, but it's actually not helpful when we come back to the moment and where it hasn't given us very much to, you know, actually work with our lives. Maybe it's, Maybe it's given us a few minutes of uh, escape and we can, we don't have to judge ourselves for that, uh, but it's not necessarily building toward, you know, especially if it's an avoidance um, mechanism or habit. So, uh, but yeah, but, but most of the other hindrances are Actually, the experience, I think, is usually pretty unpleasant. Um, you know, a little sloth and torpor when we actually fall asleep, that can feel pleasant. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so, so restlessness and worry is, is kind of unpleasant. And, 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 and recognizing that can help us to not cling to it because you know we um, it's when we let it drive us that we don't recognize how unpleasant it is you know if we're restless in our lives and we're just uh kind of going from one thing to another to another to another and and that drivenness you know as i've said about all of these hindrances they're not kind of it's really important not to think of them as sins, you know, like they're not individual sins, you know, they are, they are, they come, they're part of um, sometimes uh, just energy in the body, 
Um, not all energies in the body are, are beneficial to us, you know, like, Evolution doesn't really care about the survival of the individual, so, so not every uh, every biological impulse is uh, or driven, you know, like drive is is helpful to us as persons. And and I also come from our environment, from our our social environment, from how we have been conditioned in our lives. So, so, so restlessness can take a kind of this quality of drivenness. You know, like I have to perform, I have to achieve, I have to, uh, I have to accomplish. You know, like, I mean, there are so many things in our inbox so many emails, so many, so many tasks, so many things on our to-do list. You know, I used to feel somehow if I didn't get through my to-do list that somehow my day had been not a failure or something. And I realized the to-do list just keeps getting longer and longer the more I cross things off. So things keep getting added onto the bottom. Uh, so, so this sense of uh, drivenness um, can be in, internalized as a as feeling of restlessness and agitation um, and worry. You know this this sense of you know wanting to be in control, feeling that I should be in control. Um, again, that's such a uh, it's such a, a losing strategy <laughs> because we can never really be in control of the conditions and the circumstances around us. We can only really be in control of how we respond to them. And, and those responses set up um, new conditions. They set up perhaps, conditions that we can move into that are beneficial for ourselves and for others. So I think um, we'll move into uh, practice now. So please take a moment if you'd like to, to stand up, to, um, to stretch, uh, whatever you'd like to do. So yeah, really take care of your body. Don't don't feel it's it's a kind of better practice to to stay in a posture if you um, if you feel like you'd like to move. And we really need to love these bodies and care for these bodies that uh, give us the opportunity to live and practice and relate and engage with life.
So let's once again gather our attention into the body. If you have to have uh, left the body with your attention, just come back. There's always this uh, home base, which is present for you as long as we're alive. We have this home base, which is our, our seat, our resting place, our ally, feel the earth supporting you, feel the space around you, perhaps just uh, take in with your gaze before you close your eyes, if you usually do, just take in with your gaze, the space around you, maybe, uh, Maybe look and notice something that is pleasant, that brings you a sense of uh, joy, a tree outside the window. Maybe um, it's the presence of others on the screen. room with you. And as we begin, I invite you to check into the body and notice the quality of energy that's present in the body. Does the, the energy feel settled? Does it feel somewhat nervous, agitated? Does it feel heavy? How would you describe the quality of the energy that's present in the body? Did you recognize restlessness as an energy that sometimes you experience in the body? And is it present now? I encourage you to, um, to notice if it arises, if it's present or if it arises during the course of this practice.
And I invite you to also notice the quality of your attention. Is, is the mind settled? Does the mind connect with the body? Rest in the body, rest in the breath. Perhaps, of course, not, not perfectly. Perhaps, of course, the, the mind drifts. And, and then how present is mindfulness and, of course, all of this inquiry being done without self-judgment, but just as a practice inquiry. When do we notice that the mind is drifting and, and how, how far does it drift, how long does it drift uh, before we notice and come back? to this moment, this body, this breath. Is there some story or some set of circumstances that is drawing you into worry, into a sense of something's wrong, this needs to be fixed, or this is out of control? and noticing how that energy relates to the present moment, to the actual conditions that are perhaps happening out there in the world. And with a sense of really caring for yourself, compassion for yourself, loving yourself, really knowing that peace and joy and contentment are the real skills for responding to whatever arises in our lives. And for whatever is present in the world. The capacity to respond rather than react. These practices are done from a sense of love and compassion for ourselves. Not going on and on in the habits of
reacting or feeling helpless or whatever it is that we might be caught in. giving the gift to yourself of this breath. This breath, which is life, merged with the awareness, breath and awareness joined together. nourishes our life. Presence in the body.
as we come to the end of the sitting, I'd like to offer a very brief guided meditation and invite you to imagine that as you're sitting right where you are, you are surrounded by enlightened beings, by Buddhas, Bodhisattvas. Beings that know you deeply, see your deepest aspiration, don't judge you by the ways that you may react or get caught up, really see this deep aspiration. They see your essential self, your essential awakeness, your light, your brightness, your radiance, and love you. They love you unconditionally. And feel that love, feel it as if coming from a space beyond you and also invite this love to well up within your own heart, this love for the one who aspires to be free who aspires to be able to love generously, who aspires to be compassionate, who aspires to respond with wisdom, who aspires to be a blessing in the world. and who has come here today with that aspiration, however you might have experienced it in your motivation. <clears throat> and offering, letting that love just spring forth, flow within you perhaps like a, like a light or like a spring welling up from the earth, filling your whole being. And just, uh, you could say the word love, amour, metta, whatever word is meaningful to you to connect with that love, which flows through your whole body and beyond yourself out into the world, into the room, into the space without limits not putting a boundary on it, just letting it fill the field around you. Touching all living beings, <clears throat> human and non-human. Small and large. and all of the environment as well. <clears throat> the environment that we <clears throat> classify as non-sentient, still it's part of us, it's part of life. It flows into us, the air, the water, all of the elements <clears throat> flow into and, <clears throat> and through and beyond us. 
the flow of all of the elements. May our practice <clears throat> and, and the way that we bring our practice into our lives, may it serve and support the happiness, well-being, and liberation of all beings.